Hey everybody, I'm Mike from HGTV, and today I'm at the Summit Antique Center. This place has so much history both inside and out. Let's go inside and take a look. Hi, I'm Bob Ryan. I'm uh, one of the board members of the Summit Antique Center here in Summit, New Jersey. My wife and I started collecting antiques when we first got married. And once we over collected, we uh, then had to figure out a way to change over the merchandise, uh, the antiques, and uh, upgrade our uh, collection. And uh, yes, is the short answer. We have too many. <laughs> I'm Peter Cummings, and I'm the manager of the Summit Antique Center. I grew up on this. Um, my mother got in business in 1969, and I was a little kid. And I used to do antique shows with her and house sales with her. Um, I have family things. I have a lot of. I collect artwork. I collect antique silver. Um, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. The building is actually, uh, according to our research, and you can look it up on our website. Uh, it was built in 1906. Uh, the Presbyterian Church built this as a neighborhood house community center for the uh, mill workers in the area. We purchased the business in late 1990, early 1991, and we've been uh, operating here ever since then. Currently, we have uh, close to 50 dealers here in the center. Uh, the business and the building are owned by a smaller group uh, of the, those dealers, and the rest are uh, here selling their wares. To become a de uh, dealer or vendor at the Summit Antique Center, you must first have um, a tax number from the state of New Jersey. And then you would inquire as to what kind of space we have available. Uh, generally, floor space is pretty rare because the dealers have been here quite a while. So you'd start out in a case and eventually, if someone were to retire or uh, pass away, God forbid, um, you would then be um, uh, able to rent a space. We sell a lot of uh, different things, anywhere from jewelry, we have a postcard dealer, uh, we have vintage clothing, of course we have a lot of collectible antiques, a variety of different furniture from different periods, uh, a lot of quality merchandise. We have a terrific price point. We're, uh, we get dealers all the time. We sell to dealers, we sell to decorators. Uh, we're very friendly. And um, we're, we're really willing to help people when they come and find what they're looking for. Um, again, price point is important. We have something for everybody. And we're a great source for gifts. We, uh, unlike a lot of centers in the tri-state area here, we have survived. Um, I think in some part because we took ownership of the building and the business. We've been able to keep things stable. We sell a lot of our merchandise to other dealers. They come from New York, Pennsylvania to buy here. Uh, occasionally we get a set decorator come in who is, we've had TV shows, movies, they come in and we love to see them come in. We just had a lady in today, a set decorator. Um, uh, someone from Steven Spielberg's movie just came in on Sunday for um, West Side Story. They're doing a remake of West Side Story. We have a, a nice size space and uh, um, we're very conveniently located. Uh, easy access to 2478 and uh, easy to get to. We have uh, different ways of promoting. Uh, within the last two years we've uh, created our own website which I encourage everyone to visit. That's the Summit Antique Center. Uh, we also have an Instagram account that uh, we try to keep uh, regular postings on, and we have a Facebook account. Uh, when we're having special events, we also use Constant Contact to send out uh, email blasts to uh, alert our customers that, that we're having the sales. And of course we do uh, print advertising in antique journals, antique magazines and uh, regular uh, newspaper ads. We do monthly events. We have in-house sales. Uh, we have just came off of a tent sale, uh, which we will do at the end of each month during the summer. 
We have our regular customers and you know we're constantly trying to figure out how to attract uh, new customers because uh, you know people from my age group uh, they're more into a disposition mode now. The business has changed so much. I mean it's not just they, they, they say things now young people don't want brown furniture which is code for like antiques so they like modern things they, you know they they go to Ikea they go to Pottery Barn they go to Restoration Hardware and we're trying to get them interested in what we have but it's hard because there isn't anyone coming there isn't a Martha Stewart saying you need to buy antique furniture antique furniture is green you can't get any greener than antique furniture so in answer to your question, I don't think we want to expand. We just want to hold on to what we have and hopefully get, you know, a new uh, group of people coming along that are interested in old things. You can go and buy new things at the store. They depreciate in value almost immediately, whereas antiques have a tendency to hold their value, and especially the real quality things. We've been here quite a long time. Um, a lot of uh, centers have gone out um, and we're still we're still here come see us come see us and and bye 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 <laughs>